ओम आया ही वरदे देवी द्रक्षरे ब्रह्मवादिनी गायत्री छंदसांग माता ब्रह्मजनी नमस्ते ओम असतो मा सदगमया तमसो मा ज्योतिर गमया मृत्तोर मा अमृतं गमया आविरावीर मायेधि रुद्रजत्ते दक्षिणमुकाम ते नमाम पाहिनित्यम ते नमाम पाहिनित्यम ओम शांति 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 ओ डिवाइन मदर ऑफ द यूनिवर्स रिवील दाइसेल्फ इन आवर हार्ट्स एंड इन आवर मिड्स्ट Oi invoke thy presence amidst us thou art the sacred words of the scriptures thou art the embodiment of knowledge and liberation thou art the supreme bridge to immortality lead us from unreal to the real from darkness to light from death disease and suffering to immortality manifest thyself in us through and through and protect us with thy compassion at face om peace peace be unto us peace be unto all living beings our subject this morning life's problems and the vedanta way life is not what it appears to be it is plagued by the proverbial pairs of opposites a term used in vedanta light and darkness pain and pleasure birth and death it is threatened by uncertainties it is terminal its future is unknown what you want you do not get what you get you are never satisfied the optimist sings god tell me not in mournful number life is but an empty dream in las vegas casino they sing with a guitar life is sweet life is good spin the wheel drink the coffee optimist but the pessimist says life is a sad tale told by an idiot <laughs> full of sound and fury signifying nothing which shakespeare said the young are optimist the old become pessimist and we call them wise why should you call a pessimist person wise because he is a truth teller a graphic picture of life you probably know this story before but i i like to read or repeat that God created the mule you know mule and told him you will be mule working constantly from dusk to dawn dusk and carrying heavy loads on your back you will eat the grass and lack intelligence you will live for 50 years 
The mule answered, Lord, to live like this for 50 years is too much, eating grass. Please give me no more than 20. He wanted a shorter lifespan. God said, it will be so. Then God created dog, told him, he will hold vigilance over the dwellings of man, to whom he will be his greatest companion. He will eat his table scraps and live for 25 years. And the dog responded, Lord, to live 25 years with a dog like that is too much. Please, no more than 10 years, make my lifespan. And it was so. Then God created the monkey, told him, you are a monkey. You know, generally monkey does not think he's a monkey. As the idiot does not know, he's an idiot. You are a monkey. You shall swing from tree to tree, acting like an idiot. You'll be funny, and you will live for 20 years. The monkey responded, Lord, to live 25 years as the clown on this world is too much. Please, Lord, give me no more than 15 years, 10 years. And it was so. Finally, God created man and told him, you are man, the only rational being that walks the earth. You will use your intelligence to have mastery over the creatures of the world. You will dominate the earth and live for 20 years. Man responded, Lord, to be a man only for 20 years is too little. Please, Lord, give me 20 years the mule refused, 15 years the dog refused, 10 years the monkey rejected that those they did not want, give me those years. God said it will be so. And so God made man to live 20 years as man. <laughs> <laughs> then marry and live 20 years like a mule, <laughs> working and carrying heavy loads on his back. Then he is to have children and live 15 years as a dog, <laughs> guarding his whole house and eating the leftovers from the empty pantry. And then in his old age to live 10 years as a monkey, acting like an idiot to amuse his grandchildren. <laughs> is it not a graphic picture? But that is the, what you call, picture of life. Asked by a king, an ancient sage once said, the king asked, what's the meaning of life? The ancient sage said, a man is born, he suffers and he dies. That's all. It may sound morbid, depressing what I'm telling. But this is the message of the great prophets of the world. Buddha's first teaching is there is suffering. There is suffering. Sikhishna in the Bhagavad Gita says, 
my maya durattaya i am death i am pain i am inexorable of karma you have no escape from me sankaracharya tells us in his commentary of the upanishads the universe is a huge tree its root above branches below countless creatures humans have human superhuman they build their nests in that tree in some tree crying moaning funeral going on and maybe another branch merry making hilarious dance and music going this tree sprouted from ignorance fed by false desires and all creatures are anxious to build their nest in that tree you must fell down that tree by the sword of knowledge sir so, amuk says that most of the time the world is downcast cast with sky cloud occasional flashes of sun most of the time is a misery you see the same world not the same people you see the same subway but not the same riders you see the same river but not the same water same city not the same people every second millions are dying millions are suffering to die so life is shadowed by death youth by old age success by failure responses to this question have been various the materialists think they can combat all the sufferings of life but the material means improving the quality of life my money success but suffering is not all physical they have their mental intellectual and spiritual components a person may be billionaire but feels from anxiety commit suicide so we cannot say that through material means we can improve some say somebody wrote old age is golden i have heard it said but sometimes i wonder as i get to bed my ears on the door my teeth in the cup my eyes on the table until i wake up it is sleep comes each night i say to myself is there anything else i should lay on the shelf this is the great old age prophet is mean those who believe in prophet and golden age they hope for a golden age will come and life would be all good but golden age never comes 
you hope for it. The progressivist, those who believe in progress, that with medicine, technology, as you progress will eliminate all evil, will be all good. Will reverse your old age by making you drink ten cups of herbal tea I buy gene therapy. <laughs> but remember, when you go back to your young age, you'll have to experience all the turbulences you had before. You have to go to school, make grades. You have to marry, which is now like a gamble. And you may live maybe 250 years, but you will be like a prune. Your face look look like a prune. Prune, you know, a plum which had better days before. <laughs> <laughs> this is. Psychologists tell us, cope with it. This is it. Enjoy it. But who will enjoy? Coping with the, with the life is easier said than done. Transcendentalists like many they think, well, nothing can be done. Get out of this world, enter into a monastery or convent and repair into silence. But wherever you go, your mind will go with you and you'll make a hell out of the monastery. They miss the suffering to some extent, but also they miss the joys. Fatalists think this is all fate decree of fate. Nothing can be done. Pre pre prepared to go to the gallows and hang yourself saying a goodbye to this much ado world. Here Vedanta says, None of the solution really solves your questions. Philosophers, they are debating for centuries without any answer. Mystics are meditating with no answer, what to be done? Everywhere there is fear. Man proposes, God disposes. All that glitters is not gold. A wise man says, human beings are born crying, they leave complaining, and they die disappointed. Is not that so? Your whole life is complaining. Bhartri Hari, the saint poet, sang 1300 years ago, Bhoge Rogovaya. In enjoyment, there is fear of disease. Rupe Jarayabhaya. If you are beautiful, fear of old age. Mane Dainnabhaya, if you are a man of honor, fear of insult. Sastre Badibhaya, if you are a scholar, fear of the opponents. Pitte Nipaladbhaya, if you have money, tax people, 
government and thieves and robbers. They will take your money. Don't worry. Sri Ramakrishna says, if the money not earned by honest means, you can remember that and repeat every day. We will not come to your enjoyment. Three kinds of people will take away that money. Lawyers, medical doctors, and thieves and thugs. Those who are charitable in their last life, they get money in this life. If you live in the Sahara Desert, you, he will find you there. So everywhere fear. Vedanta says, both yoga and Vedanta, The cause of suffering is not an extra cosmic God. Then he would be cruel. We cannot say the degree of fate, then life has no meaning. No use going to the church, temple, practice prayer, meditation, nothing can be done. No use making any effort. It cannot be called by external circumstances. It is caused by you. You created this mess. Root cause, you are cut off. by the central reality of life. You have refused to live in reality. What is reality? That universe is one homogeneous existence. You are like a leaf and branch in a huge tree. There is only one life principle of the whole universe. Your existence depends upon others. To keep you alive, many creatures have to die every day. You are cut off from the fact. You created your individual ghetto. And you will be safe there, you think. But the law will flush you out. But there is another phase of reality which is relative. When you are cut up from the absolute, you are thrown into the world of relativity. You are thrown into the world of dream, fantasy, make-believe. You forget your true soul, which religions call a God. You think you are a human body, become identified. But all objects of relative world are subject to laws of change, which Hindus call law of karma. You become a person, you don't want to get old. If you get old, you do not want to die. If you want to die, you want to go to heaven.
God does not want you to go to heaven. Then God will have to go to some other place if you go to heaven. These are our popular dreams. We live in dreams. We try to escape, avoid suffering. You want to avoid old age by painting, you know, the billions of dollars of industry going on, makeup. You meditate, you know, to get the wrinkles off from your face. Every person carries a little bag with a mirror, comb and brush, even sitting in a subway doing this thing. Your hairs begin to get gray. You put five minute gel. But you go to the bathroom, take the out, but it appears be behind you. Friend reminds you that you are getting old. When people tell you, oh, you know, Mr. Jones, you are looking fine. Do you know? He's telling you are getting old. We have only three ages, youth, middle age, and you are looking fine. <laughs> we do not want to admit old age. We do not call the old person old. I am 80 years young. I never heard such a stupid statement. <laughs> we do not call an old person senior citizen. Nowadays they have changed, citizen of longer living. <laughs> we do not call laboratory as laboratory, we call restroom as if there are sofa, couch, coffee. <laughs> we invent it. But you are cut up. Billions of dollars are being spent for facelifting. And New York City is one of the capital of facelifting. But face falls again when you see the bill. Hair transplantation. I read in the newspaper. Each hair is to be planted by pricking. Then six months, you hibernate. I said, this man is going through so much pain. He's 70 year old. One day this hair will be all burnt up if you cremate. But still, But we think we'll beat the law. But these are the laws of the relative world of matter. Your body is material, so is the mind. Law applies there. But you get identified. with your body and the relative world. The Vedanta says, understand the meaning of creation. Who are you? It says creation is a fact, not an act. Fact means it is there. I don't say God created. It is evolution and involution of the totality. Human being is a layered soul. 
He has three bodies. Physical body he uses in the wakeful. In the dream state you use another body which is subtle. And causal body, why become dreamless and feel most peaceful. People say, last night I did not dream, I slept sound. Why? When you forget yourself, you feel so good. Have you asked that question? Oh, I forgot myself. That means you are not in a very good company. Youth loves you so much, but you are admitting you really do not love yourself. So it has three bodies. Death is death of the only external body. The other two remains. Your subtle body looks exactly like you. You have only three desires. Unbounded existence, unbounded joy, immortality, and unrestricted awareness. In search of these three, you died many times. After dying 8,100,000 times, you reached the human body. Before that, you were a tree. You were in the water. Physical evolution stopped on the human stage. After that, evolution continues in the mental and spiritual level. Difference between a prophet and an ordinary person, there is no physical distinction. You are constantly on the move. What you are five years ago, you are not now. in search of those three, fulfillment of three desires. <clears throat> Heaven and hell are experiences of different causes of the body and mind. Mere experiences. Salvation which is called liberation, is self-knowledge, reaching your true self, which is your identity, which is really you. You are neither male nor female. You are neither body nor mind. You are using a body according to the way you want it. You may say, well, what I am, I want it. Yeah. Science has proved you, through your intense desire, you can change yourself. A man can be a woman. If he gets tired of being a man by hormone treatment, a woman can be a man. Whatever you want, you will have. Fifty years ago, this would have been a fairy tale. So you can change. You can live with Jack's liver, Jenny's pancreas, pig's heart, 
when you go to the hospital need blood you don't say well i am a catholic i need catholic blood hospitals will say you are a loony a hindu said i need a brahmin blood think of that it is said once two person donated blood to the blood bank one american another red indian and after giving blood they make you rest little so they were conversing american asked to the red indian are you full blooded indian he said i was one a year ago now i am one pint short <laughs> full blooded think of that savior don't tell me my savior is my prophet your direct perception of the reality and your personal experience is your savior not scripture not the promise of the pastors and priests so reality becomes destructive when it is not accepted as a whole when cut up from the absolute the relative world becomes destructive this has been beautifully expressed in the kali image kali sri ram krishna said what upanishads call brahman i call it brahma moi mother if you see the image kali is standing on the chest of shiva her four hands showed a decapitated head bone and another hand pointing towards shiva shiva is the perfect imagery of god including both destructive and creative aspect pointing towards shiva the ultimate reality santam shivam advaitam non dual tranquil auspices he is telling this is the sword those who deny this adaita they will be slaughtered and this is an example decapitated head of a demon means we deny that but look towards you admit is oneness of existence no fear time becomes destructive when cut off from the timeless we call time passes time is not passing you are passing a professor giving lecture and some students were looking toward the clock suppose i am talking if you look toward the distance what i will think so professor got irritated next time he put a little note below the clock time will pass will you <laughs> so that is we do not give up 
we hear lecture, read book, pray, meditate, but still the dream. One day you'll have to leave this world. Your friends and relatives will not be able to stop you. A prisoner about to be executed was blindfolded. The captain of the executive squad asked him, you know, generally called, would you like to have a cigar, cigarette? Prisoner said, no thanks, I'm trying to quit. <laughs> huh? So this is, we want to have things at a discount rate. After 40 years of hard work, Mr. Smith retired with a comfortable fortune of 900,000 dollars, while he had, which he had gained through courage, diligence, initiative, skill, devotion to duty, thrift, efficiency, and the death of an uncle who left him 89,999. <laughs> Eighty-nine thousand, so only one dollar here. But this is, this is life. We sometimes tell things, but it carries meaning. In a cemetery there is a called job called grave digging. There are hired people. They had a strike in a cemetery. The cemetery put a sign, today's grave digging because of the strike will be done by skeleton crew. <laughs> <laughs> now he meant skeleton crew, but he was telling a profound truth. The basic problems of life, how to deal with desire and dream, and how to deal with death. Desire is dreaming. When unbridled, it will lead to disintegration. When it is denied and clubbed down, it will create neurosis and personality disorder. That's the problem. If you deny a desire which is deeply desired, you'll have neurosis. You'll go to the dream and try to fulfill that. About death and uncertainty to ignore is to live in imagination. To avoid, not possible. To escape is to be haunted by them. Let us think of the question of death. A Burton Russell will tell, death is universal. It's the finale of life. Must be accepted. And Aristotle will say it is inevitable. Must not be avoided. A Zeno, Philosopher will say, it is a bitter pill has to be swallowed. 
an Aristippus, Greek philosopher, forget it. At the urgency of the present. The Omar Khayyam poet, don't think of death. That's a distant drumbeat. Why worry about it now? As soon as you are born, death begins to beat its drum. You are dying every day. What you call death is the completion. So Morkhoyam says, why think of death today? You are a young man. As you gradually get old, the drum beat becomes louder, louder. You get panicky. A Schopenhauer will say, it is foolish for an individual will to fight against the universal will. Vedanta says, death is part of life. Death makes life possible. We die in a measured way during sleep and meditation. In practice of meditation, you are learning how to die voluntarily in a measured way. Death is walking out of an old house or a car and getting a new, which is reincarnation. Upanishad says, until you know this self, which is you, you have no rest, no peace from the merciless laws of the relative world. You may seek peace in a temple, peace, Go to mountain, vacation, pilgrimage. No, I will get. Try. If you have no peace within you at home, not even in heaven. You know the old story, an old lady wanted to go on a vacation. He came to Thomas Cook's travel agency. The agent met her. The agent said, Ma'am, we have a wonderful safari in Africa. The old lady said, Africa, dusty, wild animals, and full of heathens. Then the agent said, How about India? Oh, it's more heathens and more dust an angry son. Equally, son in India is very angry. Son means S-U-N. <laughs> then agent said, well, maybe, ma'am, you do not want to go far off. Have you thought of Ireland? He said, cold, wet, rainy, and full of Catholics. Then agent said, how about hell? It's a hot, dry, full of Protestants. <laughs> she could not find any place. Same way. You think I'll go to Benaras? I'll go to Manas Sarovar. Himalayan mountain. Swami Vivekananda said he met a holy man. Forty years he was in the Himalayas. And he came down. He could not find a solitary place in Himalayas. 
this is not a story. So one of the Upanishads says, someday man may be able to roll up the sky like a piece of leather, but still he will have no escape from death, misery, suffering until he knows his true self. So Vedanta says, maladies of life have the root cause forgetfulness of our true self or inmost self. So the Vedic exhortation is know thyself. Establish contact with the real. This is the goal of all goals. It speaks of four goals. Dharma, artha, kama, moksha. Dharma is practice of righteousness, acquiring knowledge of the sacred and the secular. Secular knowledge will help you to get money, build a house, have a wife or husband. That's all. But sacred knowledge will be needed down the road. Keep that in your pocket. What the acquisition of worldly success is necessary to make yourself free from the material worries of life. In this world, a person without money in his pocket, he is nothing. If all your time goes in making money, nothing left, you'll return home like a flat tire. When you sit down before God, please listen to my prayer. God says, what do I do with this flat tire? He has given his prime time and life to money making. Give God your prime time. Then he will give you prime reward. That doesn't mean old age, nothing. Yeah. Sometimes it may discourage you that I'm old, nothing is hope. Well, you may wake up to the fact but it is too late. Body is body, it will begin to see decline, so decline. Birth, growth, existence, decline, disintegration. Vedanta says, disarm Maya dream by taking refuge in the self. Self-knowledge is kindle the fire of knowledge inside your heart. Your contemplation, meditation, prayer, job are offerings into that fire. Devotional schools think of that self as deity. By your daily meditation, you are keeping that fire roaring. Feed that fire with meditation, japa, service, and austerity. Bhishma, the great general, in the Kurukshatra war on behalf of the Pan Kauravas, dying. Sri Krishna took the Pandavas to see him. Bhishma was a great wise person, reborn on earth. He got a boon from his father that he will not die until he chose his own time. lying on a bed of arrows. So many arrows pierced him. When he fell down, he did not touch the ground. 
but he was waiting for the movement of the northern solstices auspicious time to give up his body sikhs now told the pandavas come the great grandfather is about to leave this earth ask him from which this peace chapter of the mahabharata came duties of a monk householder mendicant all this their bhishma told the pandav sons of pandu daily bathe yourself in the waters in the river of atman taking a deep in holy water does not purify the mind so your daily meditation is taking a deep in the ocean of atman that is your real bathing so vedanta says raise the blaze of self awareness yoga is light and fire kurma purana says one text the fire of yoga burns the cage of sin a mortal being who daily thinks of this in most self twice and practices self control he is not a human being he is a god when a mountain on fire all the birds and beasts leave that mountain so kindle that fire your body is like a mountain lit up that fire feed the fire with charity or charity in bows and prayer keep that fire roaring all birds beasts and problems will leave you so vedant says integrate your goals make it one principal goal earlier i said money earth come a fulfillment of legitimate desire the third goal finally moksha liberation get out of this world after you have done your part so integrate your goal make one goal principle other goals must be subordinated to that mature your ego don't be like a like a child looking for a what you call fairy tale world cultivate this passion sir i'm to say sir a person should think of death that is going to come this passion is this world i came to run some errand i'll finish that then leave this is not the best of the worlds know your best friend not your money not your friends not your family they will go up to crematorium or burial ground your good deeds which you did for the benefit of others they are your best friends they will accompany you at death nothing of this world and nobody from this world <laughs> develop immunities against uncertainties of life he yeah, accept it when you drive in the highway you know it can end your life and sat when you go to bed you cannot say you will wake up in the morning
you have immunity of physical immunity by Medic Medicare, Blue Cross. What is the insurance against pain, uncertainty, death, sudden event? Vedanta says a human being does not live in the days of his destiny. He does not look to the sky for some supernatural intervention. He can make his way through if he wants. Work out your salvation. Change yourself to see the change in the environment and in the world. If you want peace, stop your dependence on others and seek the peace within. If you want joy, reduce your desires. If you want to conquer death, establish contact with the deathless self in you. If you want safety and security of life, Keep your palate and sex instinct under control. That will be enough. If you want to make want to make a friend, be a friend. Hope for the best, but be prepared for the worst. Wake up. Walk on. March forward. That is the exhortations of Vedanta. Make your way through. Thank you. Om Sthapakaya Cha Dharmasya Sarpa Dharma Sarupine Avatar Varishthaya Rama Krishnaya Te Namaha we bow down to Sri Ramakrishna, who is the embodiment of the divine, the establisher of religions and foremost of the incarnations of God. Om Jananing Sarudang Deving Ramakrishna Jagat Guru Padme Tayo Sri Pranavami Mahur Mahur. We bow down to Mother Sarudan, the great master Sri Ramakrishna. We take refuge at their feet and bow down to them. Over and over again. Om Namasri Jati Rajaya Vivekaranda Surai Satchit Sukha Sarupaya Samine Dukharine. We bow down to Sai Vivekananda, the king among the jyotis and yogis of all times, whose nature is that of knowledge, existence, bliss absolute, and he was born to remove the sufferings of all. Om Peace. Peace, peace, peace be unto us, peace be unto all beings, and peace be everywhere. For your own thoughts, thank you.